Thank you for joining me. I've got another game for you of Lou Maillis, this time versus this Norwegian chess player, Monica Machelik. Monica Machelik of Norway, born in 1997. And, uh, yeah, she's only rated at about 2100, so not yet a master. She is facing Lou Maillis in Blitz Chess. So Monica... Matchlick is playing white, Lu Maillie playing the black pieces. Let's get right into the game. We have d4 by Matchlick, and we have d5 by Lu Maillie. So we have the queen pawn opening, pawn to c4 by white, the queen's gambit, and Lu Maillie declines with pawn to e6. We now have knight to f3 by white and Lu Maillie plays a kind of a rare move in this position she plays pawn to a6 um, this was only the seventh most common move in the master databases not a lot of games this is not something that probably was studied by white so maybe that's the idea between the behind this pawn to a6 move Lu Maillie trying to get her over, out of book openings early we have pawn captures on d5 which is the best move in the position by white and now Lu Maillie captures back with E captures D5. And now we have knight to F3 by white, knight to F6 by Lu Maillie, and now bishop to G5 by white. Best move in the position. So evidently, this young chess player, well, she's twice the age of Lu Maillie, but only 25 years old, is not flustered by the opening variation that Lu Maillie has chosen. She's doing very well. We have bishop now to e6 by Lu Maillie. Again, best possible move in the position. And now pawn to e6 by white. Lu Maillie develops her, her b knight to d7. And now we have bishop to d3 by white. Still playing book openings here and fantastic moves by both players, even though they have only used a few moments off their clock. So they each started with three minutes. They get two seconds for each move. You can see their time controls there, sitting next to me there. We have pawn to h6 by Lu Maillie, kicking the bishop. She moves back to h4, does the Norwegian chess player. And now we have bishop to d7 by Lu Maillie. We have castles now by white and castles by Lu Maillie. And now we have queen to c2 by Lu Maillie. And only a few games have actually been played to this position. So we have several grandmaster games that have been played up to this point here. But with queen c2, there was only one other game that had been played between these two gentlemen back in July of last year. But in that game, rook c8 was played instead. And in the game that we have on the board, instead we have Lu Maillie playing rook to e8 instead. So rook to e8, and we have a brand new master game. This has not been played before. We now have rook uh, a to b8 by white, and now Lu Maillie plays pawn to c6. We have pawn to b4 by white, and Lu Maillie plays knight to b6. Now pawn to a4 by white, best possible move in the position, and Lu Maillie also finds the best move with knight to c4. We now have bishop captures on c4. This is the best move that can be played by white. And now Lu Maillie, of course, captures back. So we have D capture. She's, Lu Maillie's got doubled C pawns. And now we have knight to E5 by white. And Lu Maillie repositions her knight to D5. And now we have bishop takes bishop on E7. Best possible move white can make. Queen captures on E7. Queen captures bishop. And now queen to B2 by the Norwegian. And it would have been better actually to play pawn to A5. And we'll take a quick look at that variation now. A bit difficult to see that pawn to A5 is best because it does hang the B pawn. But we'll take a look at that now. So pawn to A5 would be best. Then we would have knight captures as that pawn was hanging. We would have queen back to b2 attacking the knight the knight would need to reposition going back to d5 here 
And now knight to a4 would be best for white. Pawn now attacks queen, pawn to c3. Knight captures c3 for white. And then black plays knight captures c3 as well. And then of course queen captures c3. This should have been a better way for white to play. We've got this backwards pawn here. It's gonna be hard to advance. That should be a weakness for white, but that's not how it went down. Let's go ahead and go back to what actually happened on the chessboard now. So white plays queen to b2, and now Lu Maoyi moves her knight back to b6. We now have pawn to a5 by white, best move in the position, kicking the knight. Lu Maoyi brings the knight back to d7. We have knight to f3 now by white, and Lu Maoyi brings her bishop to f5, attacking the rook. Of course, the rook's got to reposition, and white moves the rook to c1. Lu Maoyi brings her queen to f6. We now have knight to a4, best possible move in the position for white, looking for an outpost. And now Lu Maoyi plays a strong move, bishop to d3, attacking white's rook. We have rook to e1, best possible move in the position for white. And now rook to e4 by Lu Maoyi. This is a mistake. It's not the best way to go. We'll go ahead and take a quick look into the variation that she should have played. So instead, she should have played rook to e6 here. We would then have the knight jumping to that outpost on c5. Lu Maoyi or black should go ahead and capture that knight. We would have B captures towards the inside there. Queen back to E7 by black. And now knight to D2, attacking that pawn for a second time on C4. We have rook to G6 for black. And then best would be simply pawn to G3 here as, well, the bishop is going to have a hard time getting engaged on this diagonal as a knight should be able to handle that at least for now we now have pawn to we now have pawn to h5 by black knight captures pawn on c4 would be best for white bishop captures knight rook captures bishop on c4 and this would have been a better way for lu maoyi to play than um, what she should have been able to obtain on the chessboard during the actual game. But let's go back to that game now. So Lu Maoyi plays rook to e4 here, and we will continue with the game. We now have knight back to d2 by white attacking the rook. Best move in the position for Lu Maoyi, rook to g4, and now pawn to f3 played by white. Would have been better to actually push the g pawn here that would have been a stronger way to deal with this situation again the knight covering the diagonal so you don't have to worry about that anytime soon but we'll go ahead and continue we have rook back to g6 by lu maoyi best possible move and now king to h1 would have actually been better to play queen to c3 here but we're not going to go into that variation we now have queen to e6 by lu maoyi this was not the best way to play. She should have instead played queen to h4. And we'll take a quick look into that variation. So Lu Maoyi should have played queen to h4 here. Best for white then would be rook e to d1. We then have queen back to g5. Now knight captures pawn on c4 is best here. Queen now defending against checkmate. Bishop captures on c4, taking the knight. Rook captures on c4, taking the bishop. And now Lu Maoyi can pick up the e3 pawn. White's pawn structure is a problem. A lot of problems for white in this situation. But this is not the way that Lu Maoyi played. And we'll go ahead and go back to what actually happened on the chessboard now. So Lu Maoyi plays queen to e6. And we will continue. We now have queen to c3 by white. This is the best possible move in the position. Lu Maoyi repositions her queen to d5. And now we have knight captures pawn on c4. Best possible move for white. We have queen now to g5, threatening checkmate directly. White's got to defend. And 
what uh, the Norwegian chess player does find the strongest move in the position. Queen to d2. Then we have bishop captures knight on c4 by Lu Maoyi. And of course, rook captures by white. Rook captures on bishop on c4. And now Lu Maoyi attacks the knight with queen to b5. We have knight back to b2 by white. And now Lu Maoyi brings her rook to the d file with rook d8. Rook back to c2 by white. And now we have queen to d5 by Lu Maoyi. Pawn up to e4 by white, kicking the queen. And Lu Maoyi pushes her queen back to d6. We now have queen to e3 by white. Would have been better actually to go ahead and attack the queen here with knight c4. And actually white would be totally winning in that variation. So we'll take a quick look at that. So instead of pushing the pawn, white should have played knight to c4. Black would be obligated to move the queen. e7 would be best. Knight now repositioning to e3. Rook now to e6 and now knight to f4 attacking the queen queen now to f6 would be best and yeah white would just have better coordinated pieces she's up a pawn uh, she's got more space and yeah white would be totally winning in this variation but luckily for lu maoyi this is not what happened on the board and we will go ahead and go back to what happened in the game. So Monica played queen to e3 here, and now we have knight back to f8 by Lu Maoyi. Best move in the position for white was rook to c4 here, and now we have knight to e6 here. Lu Maoyi repositioning her knight. We now have rook to d1. Lu Maoyi plays knight to f4 here. Rook to d2. By white and now Lu Maoyi moves her queen to f6. Knight now moves to a4 for white and now queen to g5 for Lu, Lu Maoyi really cranking down on this pawn here. We have queen now to f2 by white and uh, this is a, a blunder this was a mistake she should have instead played knight to c5 and we'll take a quick quick look at that variation here knight to c5 we would have queen to h4 best for black now knight captures pawn on b7 would be okay rook now to e8 and uh, yeah this would have been a better way for white to play the game than what happened on the chessboard as white is actually winning in this position and the one she faced, uh, not she's not winning. But we'll go back to the game now. So Monica plays queen to f2 and we'll continue. Lu Maoyi plays knight to e6 here, which is a missed win. That's uh, That was not the best move in the position. So again, we'll take a quick look in what Lu Maoyi should have played rather than playing knight back to e6. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure going on here, uh, of course, with this g2 pawn. But we've also got these loose pieces over here, and you've always got to keep loose pieces in mind. Lu Maoyi should have played queen to b5 here, attacking them both. Only reasonable response for white would be knight to b6, defending the rook. We can actually play rook captures on g2 for, for black. The queen would need to move out of the way. She's under attack. Queen to e3 is best. Rook captures on d2. Queen captures on d2. And now queen back to g5. Lu Maoyi is in much better shape in this variation. Her king is nice and safe. White's pieces are kind of out of the, the position. They're not able to get back to their king very quickly. So yeah, this would have been a better way to go for Lu Maoyi, but not what happened on the chessboard. We'll go back to that game now, the actual game in progress. So Lu Maoyi plays knight back to e6 which as we saw misses the best move there and now white plays knight to c5 best possible move in the position we now have knight back to c7 by lu maoyi and now knight captures on b7 by white 
Queen now comes to b5, attacking the knight. Notice that both players only have seconds on their clock. So white actually blunders here and plays, yeah, knight to d6, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, she should have instead, of course, taken the rook. She should have taken the rook, but she didn't have any time on her clock, so she blunders there. So yeah, white, is, white was totally winning a moment ago. White is winning here. But uh, with just five seconds on the clock, she blunders, thinking that she can get away with this, attacking the queen. And uh, yeah, she should have just taken the rook. Of course, we have rook capturing, although it is rook g captures on d6 by Lu Maoyi. And now Lu Maoyi is totally winning the position, even though she barely has any time on her clock. We have rook back to d1 by white. She actually runs out of time there. I guess she moved and then ran out of time. Anyway, so that's the end of the game then. So it was just a blunder. So White was actually winning this game up until the end. Under time pressure, under time duress, the Norwegian player did uh, make a huge blunder and lost the game to Lu Maoyi. Yep, they're out of time here. Uh, you know, Black is totally winning at this point. Game over. Anyway, so Lu Maoyi does defeat Monica of Norway. Uh, thank you for joining me for that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think this was round seven or eight. There were a couple games in there where I couldn't find pictures of the opposing players. So I'm not covering those until maybe later. Yeah, there's 17 rounds to this Bliss tournament. So we still have many more games. So please like and subscribe as I will be covering. I'll probably eventually be covering them all as well as other up and coming stars. Please let me know if there's somebody you think I should cover as far as reviewing chess games. Also, I do teach chess classes, so I do group classes and individual classes. You can contact me in the comments or you can check me out on Patreon. But yeah, thank you for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.